subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Sunda Slow Loris. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Hey, what's that sound? Oh, it's a truck. The driver must be in a hurry. What is it, Hero? It's an animal. Don't be afraid, we won't hurt you. Oh, the cage is locked. I'm sorry, animal, I can't open it. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Over here. Did you find anything, Katie? Yes, I did, Leo. The animal you found is a Sunda Slow Loris. A slow loris will freeze and cover its face when it feels it's in danger. This position allows it to lick its elbows, which will give the slow loris a toxic bite. This bite is painful and can make you very sick. I can't believe the slow loris has a toxic bite. It looks so cute and cuddly. Many people think so too, which is why slow lorises are captured and sold as pets. Sadly, slow lorises do not live long when they are kept as pets. The slow loris is also endangered, which means it's in danger of disappearing forever. I see. So where does the Sunda slow loris come from? Sunda slow lorises live in rainforests in Southeast Asia. They are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day. During the night, they slowly climb around in trees looking for food, like fruits, plants, insects, and even eggs. The truck you saw earlier could belong to an illegal pet trader or Maybe it was someone from Animal Protection taking the slow loris back to its home. Then we should do that too. This slow loris belongs in the wild. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Hello, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you have a Sunda Slow Loris with you. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We found it inside this cage, but the cage is locked. Let me help you there, Leo. There you go, buddy. Careful, Ranger Rocky. The Slow Loris has a toxic bite. You're absolutely right, Katie. And that's why only trained professionals like myself should handle this animal. Good. It still has all its teeth. You get some rest, buddy. Why are you checking for its teeth, Ranger Rocky? Normally, this slow and gentle creature is non-aggressive towards humans. But if the slow loris feels threatened, there is always the chance of it biting to defend itself. So before slow lorises are sold as pets, their sharp teeth are often pulled out. Without its teeth, a slow loris cannot be returned to the wild. Because without its teeth, a slow loris cannot hunt, eat properly, or defend itself. So it's a good thing the slow loris still has its teeth. Correct. This means you can safely return it to the wild. The slow loris likes to spend most of its time in trees. So if you want to find a home for the slow loris, you should look for tall, leafy trees. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. This track is really narrow and bumpy. Leo, the cage with the slow loris fell out. Let's go down and have a look. There it is. It seems like it's doing okay. Oh, no. 
snow. It's a sun bear. Uh. Careful, everybody. We can't make any sudden move. The slow Loris is moving too slowly. It'll never get away in time. Oh, no. Slow Loris. Hey, what just happened? The sun bear smelled the toxic saliva on the slow Loris' fur. So the sun bear knows that the slow Loris is not good to eat. Well, that was close. Now let's get you back to the jeep. We did it! We found a home for the Sunda Slow Loris. Great job, everyone! Hooray! <laughs> found a Sunda slow loris in our garden. We learned that the slow lorises should not be kept as pets, but that they belong in the wild. So we went to the rainforest to find the Sunda slow loris a home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Malayan tiger. Hero, where are you, Hero? <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. You're just in time, Hero. Let's see who's stronger. I challenge you to a game of tug of war. <laughs> you take this end of the rope, and I'll take this end. The first one to pull the flag past their line wins. Ready, Hero? And go! Not bad, Hero, but I'm not gonna lose! <gasps> what? Ow! <laughs> what are you? Are you some kind of cat? Those are some beautiful stripes on its fur. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hold still, kitty. Hi, Katie. Did you find more information about the cub? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cub you found is a Malayan tiger. A Malayan tiger? Does that mean it comes from Malaysia? That's right. To be specific, Malayan tigers come from the forests of the Malayan Peninsula in Southeast Asia. But they can also be found in Southern Thailand. I see. So what do Malayan tigers eat? Like all tigers, Malayan tigers are meat eaters. They usually feed on deer, wild boar, and sun bears. But when there isn't enough food, Malayan tigers sometimes attack people and farm animals. Because of this, many tigers are illegally hunted by people. Tigers are also hunted for their body parts, like their skin. This illegal hunting is the reason why Malayan tigers are critically endangered. That means Malayan tigers are very in danger of disappearing forever. There are only about 250 Malayan tigers left in the wild. Oh no! We should protect Malayan tigers so they'll still be around in the future. You're right, Leo. But a tiger cub needs to be with its mother so it can learn how to hunt and get milk to grow. Only its mother can protect the tiger cub. Then let's bring the tiger cub back to its mother. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, 
I see you've brought a Malayan tiger cub. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We're here to bring the tiger cub back to its mother. That's great, Leo. But you must be careful not to get close to adult tigers. They might mistake you for prey and attack. Oh, dear. We'll be super careful, Ranger Rocky. What else should we know about Malayan tigers? A mother Malayan tiger usually has one to five cubs. These cubs stay with her for a year and a half before leaving to find their own home. During the time with their mother, the cubs will learn how to hunt and stalk prey. If you want to find the cub's mother, you should keep a lookout for places with tall grass. Tigers prefer to live in tall grass, where they can hide from predators and ambush their prey. Good luck and stay safe, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. We're here. Hmm. I don't think it's safe for us to look for the cub's mother in the tall grass. We won't be able to see her coming. What if we look for the cub's mother from up there? Good idea, Katie. Come on, everybody. Let's fly. Tiger cub! Oh, no! The tiger cub jumped into the tall grass. We have to find it. Where did the cub go? Leo, could the tiger cub be in there? Or maybe it's over there. The tiger cub might be in one of the grass patches, but we can't go into the grass to check. There might be predators in there. Hey, I've got an idea. I'll use this. Great idea, Leo. Let me try it. Tiger cub. I got you, little one. We did it! We found the tiger cub's mother! Great job, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found a Malayan tiger cub in our garden! We learned that Malayan tigers are endangered and that tiger cubs need their mother to be protected. So we went to the forest and brought the tiger cub back home to its mother. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The sun bear. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Where are you? What is it, Hero? It's a bee. Careful, Hero. Keep a safe distance. The bee is collecting nectar from the flowers. Let's find out why. The bees collect the nectar and return to the beehive to make honey. What was that? It's a small bear! I wonder how it got here. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Now hold still, little bear. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? You're just in time, Leo. The computer is almost done. This animal is a sun bear. It's also known as a honey bear because it loves to eat honey. So it was trying to steal honey from the beehive. But why is it called a sun bear? The name sun bear is because of the golden colored crescent shape on its chest. All sun bears have it. You can find sun bears in the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia and other parts of Asia. So other than honey, what do sun bears eat? Sun bears eat both plants and small animals. 
They eat insects such as bees, termites, and ants, as well as small birds and lizards. They have big claws, which they use to rip open trees and termite nests. The sun bear you found is very young. Normally, sun bears stay with their mothers for three to four years. Well, I think we should help little sun bear find his mother back in the rainforest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the rainforest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you brought a sun bear. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We are here to bring him back to his mother. That's great, Leo. But I have to warn you, though the sun bear is the smallest of all bears, it is known to be extremely aggressive. You are lucky you found a young sun bear. Then we'll make sure we keep a distance when we find its mother. During the day, a sun bear sometimes likes to sit and sleep in the trees. Though it's a strong animal, it still has predators such as tigers and leopards. The main predator of sun bears, however, are humans, who hunt them for their fur and meat, or who keep them as pets. Good luck, Junior Rangers! Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! What's the matter, guys? Why did you stop? <laughs> It seems like they don't want to go into that direction. If we want to find the sun bear's mother, we have to continue. Let's go. Oh, what's that smell? Yuck, I smell it too. What is it, Hero? A flower? I think the smell is coming from this. This is a Rafflesia flower. They are one of the largest known flowers in the world. So why are there flies? The Rafflesia flower releases a bad smell to attract flies to spread its pollen. Pollen is a very small grain that flowers produce to make more flowers. That's very interesting, Katie. But let's not stand too close to them. Quickly, let's go. The sun bear and hero tried to warn us. Both of them have a very strong sense of smell. Ah, uh, it still smells horribly here. Oh no, so many Rafflesia flowers. <laughs> Let's follow them. Their noses can help us find a way out. We better stay here, little sun bear. It's up to you now. We did it! We found the sun bear's mother. Great work, everyone! Hooray! <laughs> a young sun bear in our garden. We learned that a sun bear is the smallest of all bears, but they can be very dangerous. The young sun bear needed his mother, so we went to the forest and returned him home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The wild boar. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, the potatoes are ready. You wanna help me dig them out? Great, 
We can have baked potatoes for dinner this evening. Hey, where did you come from? It's okay, Hero. We have enough potatoes to share. It has a snout like a pig. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Look up, Harry Pig. Hi, Katie. So what did you find? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a wild boar. A wild boar? The wild boar is like a pig that lives in the wild. There are different types of wild boars, and the one you found is a young eastern wild boar. Eastern wild boars are found in the tropical jungles of India, Southeast Asia, and the Far East. It likes our potatoes. What else do they eat? Wild boars are omnivores. They eat leaves, fruits, and nuts, and also animals like insects, mice, and worms. Sometimes they damage farmlands when they eat all the crops. Yes, it ate up many of our potatoes earlier. Let's bring it back to its natural habitat where it can find more food. Come and join us. Good idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Ranger Rocky! Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see your new friend is a young wild boar. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We found it eating our potatoes in our garden. We want to bring it back home. You might want to look for a forest thick with trees and a lot of vegetation. So a place with enough food for them to find and shelter for them to hide from predators. And if you want to find this young boar's mother, you should look for a sounder. A sounder? Yes, a sounder. A sounder is a group of female wild boars and their young children. Male boars will leave their sounder and live by themselves when they are old enough. Male boars have larger canine teeth than the females. This young boar is a female, so she will stay with her sounder. Then we have to bring her back to the sounder she belongs to. Wild boars are shy creatures, but they might attack if they feel threatened or when they are protecting their young. So be careful. You might be able to find a sounder deeper in the forest. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Boy, it's a very hot day. Is she okay? It seems wild boars do not like extreme hot or cold weather. They are nocturnal, so they usually sleep in the day to avoid the heat. Sometimes they roll in the mud to keep themselves cool. What is it, Hero? You found a mud pool! There you go, wild boar! What is it, Hero? It's a lynx! It's one of the wild boar's predators! Oh no! We have to hide! Hmm... The mud seems to camouflage the young wild boar. I don't think the lynx can find the boar. But the lynx can see us! It's coming closer! Let's worry about the dirt later. Here we go! That was close! Phew! <laughs> Rolling in the mud pool is cool indeed! 
Let's clean up before we continue. Okay, little one. We'll stay here. It might be too dangerous for us. Look! It's her mother! We did it! We found the sounder of the young wild boar! Great job, everyone! Yay! Yay! wild boar in our garden. We learned that wild boars live in dense forests with lots of vegetation. So we went to the forest and brought her back to her sounder. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The greater mouse deer. Hi everybody, my name is Leo and I am a Junior Ranger and this is my puppy Hero. I'm picking blueberries. Look how ripe they are. Mmm, and they taste really fresh and sweet. Let's pick blueberries together. It'll be fun. That's strange. Where have the blueberries gone? They were right here a moment ago. Look, they're disappearing. What is it, Hero? Is that a deer? Hmm, it looks like a deer, but it's so small. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hold still, little guy. Hi, Katie. So if it's not a deer, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you've just found is a mouse deer. It's called a mouse deer because it has hooves, like a deer. But its face and body is similar to that of a mouse. There are different types of mouse deer, and the one you found is called a greater mouse deer. Why is it called a greater mouse deer? That's because of all the different mouse deer, it's the largest. Still, mouse deer are small in size compared to other hoofed animals. In fact, they are the smallest hoofed animals in the world. Being small helps them hide better in the wild. They have long pencil thin legs that make them quick on their feet. They are also nocturnal animals which means they're active during the night. This is why the mouse deer is almost never seen. I see. We almost missed it eating our blueberries. The greater mouse deer likes to eat fruits, but they also eat leaves and aquatic plants. By the way, it lives in different countries in Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm. I don't think there are enough blueberries in our garden. We should return it to its home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Rocky. Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the rainforest. What are those things, Ranger Rocky? These are animal traps. I found them by the bushes. Luckily, no animal was caught, and I'm making sure they never will. What happens to animals that get caught in the traps? They might be taken for their meat or fur. Anyway, it's bad news for the animal, so better watch out for these traps. Ah, I see you've brought along a greater mouse deer. What a lovely creature. Yes, Ranger Rocky. 
We found it in our garden, and we're trying to return it to its home. Greater mouse deer mostly live alone or with just one partner. Their homes or territories are quite small. Just keep a lookout for a place with lots of shrubs, bushes, and plants close to water. These animals like to live near water because they can hide in it from predators, while at the same time live in thick undergrowth. Undergrowth. Undergrowth is the shrubs and other plants growing beneath trees in the forest. The greater mouse deer uses the undergrowth to travel through tiny tunnel-like trails in the forest. It helps them to stay hidden. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. I guess we'll have to walk the rest of the way. Come on, everybody. <laughs> what is it, Hero? The mouse deer is gone. Where is it? It's so hard to see anything here. What was that? The mouse deer might be in danger. Hero, lead the way. <laughs> the mouse deer is trapped. This must be one of the animal traps Ranger Rocky warned us about. I can't lift the door. I think there's some kind of lock on it. That's it, Hero. Let's all dig a hole together. That's a great idea. We can make a tunnel for the mouse deer. Almost there. It's still not big enough. We can use this. It's working. You can do it, mouse deer. We did it. We saved the mouse deer. Yay! Look, another mouse deer. And they recognize each other. We did it. We found the mouse deer's home. Great job, everybody. Hooray! Yay! We found a greater mouse deer in our garden. We learned that the mouse deer feeds on fruits and plants and lives close to water and forest undergrowth. So we went to the rainforest and brought it back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. <laughs>